Hi guys, so uh, back to a, having another look at a respirator today. Uh, it's another general service respirator yeah, in an Indian Mark 7 Haversack. Uh, so the usual format, I'll get the respirator out, have a look at that, and then we'll have a look at the Haversack contents and the Haversack after that. Okay, so here we have what is a very late production um, Mark 5 face piece with the E6 filter. Uh, obviously black rubber hose uh, as opposed to cloth covered. Uh, it's quite interesting in that it shows the very late features that were used um, on the GS uh, the GS respirators. Uh, for example, the face piece is no longer wired onto the uh, I forget what the component here is is called, but anyway, the exhale valve and the uh, the inhale port on the front here. It's actually clamped on, uh, and the clamp is there. Then there's a rubber piece that fits over the clamp, and then it's taped. That rubber piece is taped on. You can see here it's not wired on. It is a, a metal strip that's then clamped together. Similarly, the filter is attached to the hose using a little uh, metal clamp that's screwed together. You can see there's a screw with a nut on it here. And that means you can change the filter more readily. You can just unscrew that, take the filter off, and then clamp another filter on uh, should you need to. Get the filter here. Filter is dated 1942, I think. Yeah, 1942, this one. So again, quite a late production uh, filter. The face piece is also dated 42, Leyland and Birmingham, uh, LMB, Leyland and Birmingham rubber. And the uh, back piece of the head harness is not the rubber type which the elastics pass through, but the canvas type which is also used uh, on the light anti-gas respirator fitted upside down strangely I'm not sure whether that's because it's fitted to a GSR as opposed to an LAGR uh, but with 1943 dated component there so quite a late production quite a late assembled uh, set and as such I have it in a 1944 dated uh, Indian made Mark 7 uh, Haversack with all the contents we'll have a look at the contents now and then take a look at the Haversack so inside here we have the usual uh, Mark 7 Haversack pockets. Obviously we'll get onto the differences between Indian made and, and British made Haversack in a, in a moment or two. You've got the anti-dimming outfit, Mark 6 anti-dimming outfit here. Um, so that fits in the little pocket there. Whoops, dropped it in the Haversack. We've got the usual uh, pocket here for the anti-dim. You see wads of cotton waste on top and there's more beneath. And this is for tropical use, obviously with it being an Indian made have a sack. Uh, it uh, is appropriate to have a tropical uh, number six anti-gas ointment in there, and you can see on the back there it's 45 dated, um, and this is resulted from tests done with um, other forms of uh, anti-gas um, ointment uh, out in the uh, in I believe in Australia that were where tests were carried out in tropical condi tropical conditions to see whether the effects of, of blister agent on the skin of mustard gas were exacerbated and to dis devise a, a cream, that, uh, an ointment that would uh, work under tropical conditions. And we have a, obviously the, the obligatory uh, pack of eye shields, um, which are, let's have a look here, 1944 dated on the back there. The Haversack itself obviously differs from the British uh, version in several ways. It's uh, obviously like the mark the British Mark 7, everything's contained under one flap in individual uh, compartments there. It uses um, studs rather than press studs, so similar to used on it, on it those will be used on a Sam Brown or other leather equipment, uh, which just go through little buttonholes on the, the flap here. Quite nicely stamped and dated. Um, Mark 7, I don't know if we can... It's a bit faded, but it's Mark VII, and then PSC 44, 1944 dated. Um, these, uh, I think I had to fit new buckles on the strap. I believe that was the buck. The strap had been sewn together, so I had to put new buckles on the strap with this one. Uh, it also differs from the British um, Mark 7 in that it doesn't have the little, the round button which you pass the whip cord around to secure it. On the chest or at the waist, uh, it has a little eyelet that you tie off 
this uh, string, so a little D-ring rather that you tie off the the waist string to, and the waist string is not. Uh, this is the this is the string that originally came with the uh, haversack, and as you can see, it is not whip cord <laughs> like the uh, British haversacks used. It's uh, well hemp twine or or jute twine perhaps. Um, eyelets in the bottom, uh, as opposed to the the uh, vent holes used in British. Uh, these mesh vents used in, in British haversacks, uh, just simple uh, eyelets there. Um, obviously you still have the reinforcing stitching um, for the uh, loop, obviously they're stitched in a V in there, the loop that holds this, this D-ring. Um, as you can see there, the outline of the pockets, much like a, uh, the British example, so it passes the shoulder strap passes through rings as opposed to uh, hooks or anything like that as on the earlier types in that way. It's also the same as the British design. So that's the uh, the Indian Mark 7 Haversack. So there we have a late production Mark 5 general service respirator in an Indian Mark 7 uh, Haversack with the contents. So I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now.